Welcome to the Boostly Podcast. We are in season seven, episode 18. And today we're just going to delve back a little bit and we're going to talk about what exactly is an online travel agent. So my name is Mark Simpson and I help all hospitality owners from all over the world increase their direct bookings. But today we're going to talk about what an OTA is. What is an online travel agent? Why should you be listing your business on them when I'm talking about direct bookings? And this is a a really important episode because I believe that so many hosts don't know what OTA means. Now, I have been waiting for my opportunity to interview Guesty. I've tried and tried and tried. We've had to rearrange and rearrange due to life and busyness. But I finally managed to track down Shelly. Shelly's the the, the BDM over there at uh, Guesty. Guesty are based in Tel Aviv in Israel. They are going to be at the Short Stay show on March the 12th, 2020. Going to be talking at the same show as I am at the London Excel, which is going to be my biggest ever talk, which I'm super excited for. Please, please, please come and say hi to them. Go watch Shelley's talk. Go watch my talk if you are planning on checking it out. Just go onto Google, type in Short Stay Show. It'll come up. You can book your tickets and we'll go from there. I want to say a quick shout out to the sponsors of the Boosted Podcast, Hostfully. Right now, we are doing a joint competition to find the best guidebooks of Hostfully land. If you go to hostfully.com, you can go and create your free guidebook. You get one free guidebook. If you want to go to two or three or four, then you have to pay. If you are going to pay, if you are going to go premium, put Boostly2M in the promo code. You get two months free. And also as well, Boostly gets a little bit of love from Hostfully because you have done so. The competition, if you want to go to hostfully.com forward slash contest, all the links will be in the show notes. You've got a couple of weeks to submit your guide but please do so even if you think it's not the greatest please go and submit it because we're going to have loads of different categories and what we're going to do is we're going to be giving out prizes uh, there's lots of cool fun little prizes it's just a nice little thing it'll take you a couple of minutes to submit it and just share it with me as well you know go on to twitter at boostly uk it's right there at boostly uk and you can go and send me your link to your guidebook at me or send me a dm on instagram find me on the facebook or even just email mark at boostly I do love to see him. Anyway, let's get on with the show today. It's all about the online travel agents. Make sure that you rate, review and subscribe before you leave. If you're watching the video version of this podcast on YouTube, go and subscribe, please leave a comment. And also as well, if you are watching on any of the channels, Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, got everything going on the Boostly podcast. Now, please make sure that you say hi, leave a message in the comments, send me a DM. And if you want to find out more about Boostly, go to B-O-O stly.co.uk and you can go down the rabbit hole there. Without further ado, please sit back, relax, tune in to this episode. If you're on the go, if you're in the car, doing the laundry, changing over, doing the big shop, whatever you're doing, please, please, please enjoy this one. It's a fantastic episode. I had a lot of fun doing it. Guesty are a fantastic PMS provider and I really recommend everybody to go and check it out, specifically their USP that I'm going to delve into in this topic. First of all, thanks for having me here today. So I'm Shelly. I'm the business development manager at Guesty and I've been with Guesty for three years. So uh, we were a company company of 30 when I started. Today we're over 300. So it's been a crazy three years with Guesty of rapid growth. I first started with sales at Guesty actually, and then I grew to be a sales sales team leader and then ended up in business development where I manage our marketplace activity, vetting our third party integration so that we bring really awesome solutions from OTAs, which we're going to speak about later today, all the way down to pricing tools, home automation tools, guest experience management, right? So covering the entire market so that our users can tap into the ecosystem to build their tech stack. So that's my day to day. And yeah, it's fantastic to be here. Shelly is actually going to be speaking at the same event as me on March the 12th. We're going to be over in London. We're going to be at the London Excel at the short stay show. So looking forward to to seeing your your talk there, Shelly. What are you going to be talking about on the day? What can you give a little sneak peek of uh, if anybody's coming on down? Yeah, we're excited for short stay too. So I'm going to be speaking about millennial 
millennials, technologies, and booking, which also actually, again, relates to what we're talking about here today and how you can tap into the generation to really enhance your occupancy rates. Nice. So if you want to find out more uh, about the show, I'll say it's happening very, very soon. Go into your Google or your Bing or wherever you, you, you search for internet stuff and just type in short stay show London 2020. Nice big blue website will pop up. You'll see you'll see all, both of our faces on there and you can go ahead and get yeah. Uh, and so also come say hi to us. Yeah, definitely. Come say hi. Uh, you've got a, a stand and a guestie do a lot of great yeah. work. And I'm looking forward to delving in and finding out more about guestie during this. So today I'm going to ask a question that I get asked a lot. Mm -hmm. the, the three little letters is OTA. No, we're just going to go in. We're, we're going to treat this just as nobody's ever heard of, of what an OTA is. So let's just start from the very beginning. When you yeah. hear the words OTA, can you just unpack it a little bit and explain a little bit more about what that means? Yeah, absolutely. So an OTA stands for an online travel agency. So you likely know them as Airbnb, Booking.com, HomeAway, right? Expedia, TripAdvisor, and the list goes on. There are many OTAs out there that are there to really help you maximize your reach and you know maximize your guests because they're targeting guests from all over the world. So they are platforms that enable you to distribute your properties. Um, and again, in order to achieve maximum occupancy rates. Yeah, like I say, online travel agent, Booking.com, Airbnb, Expedia, they've been around years. Yeah. Uh, so as a property owner, uh, property owners that, that are tuning this, obviously I think maybe 90% of people watching will be listed on an online travel agent in some way, shape or form. But if you could just break it down, how does an online travel agent work? As in, how do they go about getting customers to then find out about our properties and, and, and what are they doing that, that we might not be? Yeah, so these online travel agents are massive marketing platforms, right? And behind them, they're, they're the kings of SEO, they're the kings of online reach, and they really know how to target the guests that you're looking for. So as we said, right, they are platforms to help you distribute your properties so you can, you know, achieve the max, maximum occupancy that's possible. At the end of the day, the more reservations you have, right, the more revenue you have, obviously, and the more guests you're serving, which encounter and encompass your entire business, right? So everything is around that. So the main goal of property management companies around what we see with our users, again, across the market is, you know, being able to have the best online travel agent strategy so that they can maximize their reach. Obviously, the, the Boosted podcast is all about getting direct bookings and how to yeah. do your direct bookings, but it's really yeah. important as well to, 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 to realize and to sort of put into practice that how can you make these OTAs work for you Absolutely. And, and not the other way around? And there's so Absolutely. many things that you can be doing right from the off. And, and we're going to sort of unpack a couple of these. But So how can anybody watching this? And now there may be some people that uh, have just got started in the world of hospitality, but maybe people have done it for a while and they're not yet on the OTAs. But how right. easy is it to get started on, on these sites? Like what, what, what is the, like the, the, the requirements from OTAs to, to, to get on their website? So, you know, listing your properties on each individual platform is actually very time consuming. There's a whole, in, you know, acceptance process for some platforms. Some platforms require you to have certain picture level, right? Every platform is different in their requirements. So then once you're looking to get on different OTAs, you need to learn what each of those requirements are. Then you need to go and create the property, right? And then you know, the list goes on and on if you're doing this individually, which is why platforms like Guesty that do have a channel manager feature help you guys synchronize all of this in one place where you're creating the listings in one place and you're uploading the listings and distributing the listing to the different platforms with, you know, one place to do it from uploading your, you know, changing your pricing strategy, all of that. So again, you know, listing your properties on an OTA definitely needed, especially to, you know, as Mark said, really drive direct reservations as well. And we'll talk about that later. But of course, again, you know, you don't have to spend so much time doing it with the platform behind you. Well, I like that. I like the little mention of guests yeah. as well. So we, we can talk about yeah. <laughs> a little bit. So I'm a property owner. We've got I've got one property in, in the middle of in the middle of Spain. 
And I oh, go okay. on to say booking.com. I go and list my property on there. I get a booking, which is great. Now, how do I get paid? Do I, do I get paid from the OTA directly? Do I have to wait for the guest to pay me? How, how does the sort of the payment part work? So each OTA has a different payment policy, right? So again, when you're looking at each OTA, you need to look at which payment policy works for you. Some are paying directly at check-in, some are paying half, you know, half at booking confirmation, half at um, check-in or holding that deposit and only releasing it after, right? There is different different ways that these OTAs collect payments, but they are directly between you and the OTA. So they are the ones that are paying you out for some of them. And for others, you are required to process these payments on your own and use a payment processor. So for example, booking.com, you can choose either option. Home away, you will need to use a payment processor as well, right? Airbnb processes the payments for you. If it comes to like payment processing and stuff, is, is there any specific one that you work with, i.e. Stripe or FabPay, or do you work with, with everybody when it comes to collecting payments? Again, in regards to Airbnb, they're the ones processing the payment, but if you're using our payment processor, which is Stripe, then you know that is, that is who we're working with and it's because of their, their global coverage that we work with them. And But we are looking to add more payment processors to even reach more countries because Guesty is operating in over 80 countries right now. Nice. Yeah. Okay, so all sounds good. So you, you basically, you can put your property for free onto these massive online travel agents that spend billions in making sure that people come onto their, web, their property instead of everybody else's, their website. So then they will promote your property on there and then all you have to do is then you have to pay them a commission when a when a booking comes in now it all sounds good obviously we're going to touch on direct bookings later but what are the cons so like we've touched on a couple of the pros but what are like the negative aspects of having your business on third party on an ota so exactly what you said mark right the ota can offer many pros invisibility, maximizing your reach, right? Getting you the type of guests that you want if you are focused on specific types of guests with your different properties, if you're, you know, luxury, if you are catering to corporate travelers. So that being said though, there the con, and again, you also said this, is that you do need to pay commission to the OTAs. Unlike direct bookings where, you know, you are making that, that's direct revenue to you guys. So again, many pros, but it is with a commission that comes, you know, with being on their platforms. Commission obviously varies depending on which platform that you're on. Everybody has their own like ways like Airbnb at the moment, uh, you know, 4% where, you know, booking and Expedia both start at a minimum of 15. And there's others that that do more depending on location and, uh, and what you do. I think another negative for me, from, from our family business and working with, with OTAs is that you, you obviously got in your mind, your yeah. niche as in the type of guest that you want to attract, like whether that's family right. friendly and, and X, Y, and Z. When you yeah. do list your property on these big businesses, you do then sort of open your doors to, to everybody and it has the pros and the cons, you know? So you do sort of, Again, when you throw it up on booking.com or Airbnb, right. you do sort of anybody can, can book. And, and, you know, you do right. sort of take that control away from the sort of the, the quality of the guests that you come to stay with them. But again, you do get the quantity. And at the end of the day, you've got to get heads on beds. You've got to get bills, get to get paid. But these are the sort of things that you can totally. still achieve with, with direct bookings. And it's just a case of figuring out more, which we are going to talk about. Now, Guesty is, as you said, in 80 countries, you must have hundreds, if not thousands, of owners and agencies running through your platform and obviously doing marketing you must see a lot of people's properties now what is the one mistake that you see accommodation owners make when they start to put their property on these OTAs only one mistake so obviously there are many mistakes that can be made i would say the most hopefully important mistake that people should avoid making is not investing in reviews and the reason being that is that's your online profile and that's you know the voice of your listing speaking to the guest right so invest a little bit more in getting reviews you can easily you know increase your review you know review getting if you give a review so improving that um, and again you know enhancing your online image 
to these potential guests. So let's unpack this a little bit because I like this. Reviews is obviously really, really key. And, you know, it's whether you like it or not, reviews can can make or break your online presence on on, on these sites, whether it's Airbnb yep. or, or Booking or wherever. Yep. So when you say go out and, and get more reviews, how would you, if a guest is left, now, there's always a case where you can ask them as they're leaving. You know, if you've got right. that face-to-face contact with them, oh, yeah, please go leave a review. They go, yep, yep, yep. As soon as they get in the car, then the real world kicks in and then just never leave it. What do you recommend to people to do to then sort of go and get those reviews? Are you sort of thinking about email templates, like reaching out about via a text or something like that okay. after a guest has stayed? Like, what, what would you like to see? What, what do you notice people not doing that you think they should be? Yeah, so there, there's a couple of ways. First of all, you know, somebody who's on their way out of your apartment, your your home, they're on their way out, right? So follow up with them, follow up a week later, you know, be that reminder for that great vacation that they just had and ask for, you know, a review there with the follow up template, you can do automated SMSs, emails, you can do it, you know, right away the day after on the channel if needed, right, things like that. But obviously, SMS and email, is ideal. So collect that information. You have that information already from the reservation. So that's one. Two is again, you know, make it easy for them to leave a review. So give them the link that gets them to the page. Make it actionable trigger when you're sending that email so that again, they're more likely to do that. And then if you don't see them doing a review, then leave them a review. And then they're more likely as well to go and leave you a review, right? So Those are three ways I think you can really boost your review rates. Obviously, you can also use reputation management software, so it can also help with that. You know, we're we're building and managing reviews in Guesty, so that's something that you'll be able to do in softwares, so in our software specifically as well. So yeah. And obviously about that last one where you're saying go and leave a review first, that's that's heavily geared towards obviously Airbnb because that's a big part of of uh, their platform is the review where yeah. the host can actually leave it. And, you know, I've got uh, booking.com coming on to the Boosley podcast in a couple of weeks time. And that That's is right. one of the suggestions that I'm going to be throwing out to them is the off- the service where hosts can review guests on, on booking.com. Cause I think that personally, that's something that I feel is missing, but you're right. You know, if you, if you've got that ability on Airbnb where you can go and review your guests first, then, you know, it's, it's a massive indicator because again, if you've been ever been on the other side and you've been a guest staying at an Airbnb and the host leaves the review first, Airbnb yeah. send a very enticing email to you to say, look at what host name said about you, which, you yeah. know, again, it, it makes you leave a review. And, you know, there's loads of other things that you can be doing. You can, you know, I, I always used to do this at our family business. We used to incentivize reviews. Now I'm not incentivizing good reviews because that's, that's right. just the T's and C's, but you know, you can be very clear with your word and an email or a text or, you know, just whatever you do to get, to get the message across. I say, listen, whether it's a good or bad, whether it's one or five, please go and leave a, a review over on okay. the things that we do. Uh, we were using, I mean, our main call, at that time when we we're doing this we was to get to top three on TripAdvisor. So we would always send people to TripAdvisor. And now I've, I would be sending them to Google if it was like the same same thing. But we're saying good or bad, go leave a review. Every month we pick one name out of a hat, random, and then you win X, whatever that X may be. And that was a real indicator because you can ask and ask and ask and ask and ask, but you've got to have a little incentive, a little carrot on the stick. You've got to make it worth their while because they'll just go, listen, we liked you, fantastic, but so what? And I think, you know, if you're thinking, how do I get more reviews? Try and think of a little incentive. But if you're going to do an incentive, be uber clear, really clear that it's not in exchange for a five-star review will give you right. this shiny thing because then that's how you can get in, in a lot of trouble if you get if you get reported. Now, we've gone through a lot of the things. We've sort of teased a little bit of what Guesty is, but I'd like to sort of take the next part of this, just dig it in a little bit more because you guys have been on my radar for a while. Um, there's a lot of uh, Boostly website clients that use Guesty and it's it's a service that I love as a specific feature that I want to touch upon in, in a minute, but just give everybody uh, tuning in a little bit of a more of an idea of who and what Guesty is and, and how you work and, and who you best serve if you could just do that. Sure. So Guesty is a property management platform. So we're an end-to-end solution for property management companies who are really looking to scale their business, but also automate, you know, 
you know, pretty much their entire operation so that they can focus on that growth yeah. in whatever way that means for them. So, you know, Guesty is really catered for property management companies with above five listings. You know, again, it's a powerful tool. It's a powerful software. Um, it's your business tool. So for, for those professional property management companies, and again, who are looking to have that growth, but also have powerful features behind them. I was yeah. going to say, so it's a PMS, it's a channel manager, you've got the automations. Right. If there would be, say, a, a guest house owner watching right now, do you, do you typically work with guest houses? They've got, say, five to, to, ten, to 10 bedrooms, or are you geared more at the, the rental uh, owners here. So we do definitely cater to to guest houses. I would say the best fit for Guesty would be property management companies who are managing whole units, individual units, or you know entire buildings. Again, we have really great features for that. Um, but of course, with our multi-unit feature, we also support rooms in that. However, you do need to have a minimum of five properties to be with Guesty. But of course, you know, we are speaking to everybody when it comes to and, and doing demos. So, you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's really if, if it's a right fit for you, you know, we'll, you know, and if it's a right fit for us. So just in case, just go onto the Guesty website and we'll, we'll provide all the links at the end. And you can go and request a demo and, and have a chat and see if it's a, a good fit. For example, I, I speak to a lot of people and I do coaching calls and things and they're saying, I'm looking for a, a new PMS. They, they're using X and they're looking for a new one. Again, they're looking to scale, like you're talking about. Right. They, they do rent to rent or they do buy to rent. You know, there's okay. loads of things and they're always saying, who, who, who do I chat to? And there's a ton of PMS providers. There there are so many of them. You can just go to booster.co.uk forward slash PMS and there's a review on every single one based on real life experiences from hospitality community members. But what I love about Guesty, and this is a question that when somebody asks me, who should I use as a PMS? I always take them down set round of questions. So it's how mm -hmm. many properties do you have? Da, 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 da. And it, it comes to one. And, it, and it, the, the, the main question is, do you do all of the customer service yourself as in answering questions from guests, etc., Or do you have a team that does? And if they always say to me, I'm doing it myself, then I always say, have a look at Guesty because there's one thing that you do, which is the, uh, the guest communications package. Right. Now, could you please, because this is unique, as far as I'm aware, I don't know if anybody else offers it, but could you just please right. delve, delve into what that is and how that works and how it could benefit uh, a property manager or, or anybody that's watching? Yeah, absolutely. So our 24-7 guest communication service was actually how Guesty started. And with this service, we developed our software. So what this service is, is it's a 24-7 guest communication service where we have a team of well-trained guest service experts who are there to answer your guests from the moment that you receive that first inquiry to the moment that the guest is checking out. So we're, you know, we're your communication team 24 seven to your guests and freeing this up, this part of your business up again, really gives you guys time to focus on listing acquisition, marketing strategies, right? Things that, you know, that Mark talks about here and it's covered by a team of experts with Guesty. So um, it is an upsell when you're using Guesty software. Um, it can't be instead of the software, it, it goes hand in hand. But again, you know, having that 24 seven coverage is, is definitely so key to your to your occupancy rate because you have quicker conversions for reservations. So say that I'm a host, I've got 10 properties and yeah. I, you know, I'm just thinking back to my last season, my peak season, that week in August where you're literally running around like a blue ass fly and you've got all the questions right. coming in. So I know all the questions that, that people ask on a day-to-day -day basis, guests ask pre, post, whatever state. How do I help guesty train your, your staff so that they can then relay those questions that I get all the time to potential guests. Is it a case of like a form that we fill in or do we have to help train them? Yeah. So we um, absolutely guide you through that training. So we have an onboarding specifically for the service. We go through your frequently asked questions, right? What do we want to, what do you want to do in case of an emergency? Who do we call if it's 10 AM, if it's 4 AM, right? What does that look like? You know, if somebody's asking for a discount, what's your go-to, right? So we're really your voice. And again, we're taking our property managers through that onboarding, which in some ways, again, for let's say you are that property manager with 10 properties, this is a fantastic way to understand what's your best you know, guest communication strategy and what you really need to have honed in on and, and completely you know, outlined because this is what you're going to experience in your day-to-day -day and we really you know, can help 
with that, whether it is by answering you, you know, or if you're getting started and you want to learn more for a year, you know, things like that. So it's definitely either a tool for growth, a tool for learning, but we're, we're guiding our, our, our users through that. It's something that I talk about all the time is outsourcing and you, you can't do yeah. everything. You can't spin all the plates because if you do it, then totally. you burn out and the business will, will suffer. And you know, if you're happy being the person that is always in reactive mode, you know, always asking, answering the questions because you like to be the face or whatever, that's absolutely fine. But if you want to be that proactive yeah. business owner, hospitality owner, accommodation owner, whatever one you want to class yourself with, and you want to take the business forward and go from 10 to 20 to 30 properties. Yeah. And if you haven't built your own team of virtual assistants, so to speak, and you haven't got a clue how to do that, then this is the, the perfect solution. Because as well as doing That's this, right. you've got email automation, you've got all the software that everybody else has, but I'm always looking at unique selling points, USBs. And this for me is like 100% what, what guests you do really, really well. So thank you very much for touching on that. Now, as I like to end every podcast, we've got some quick fire questions. Now I have pre sent these to Shelly, so we will have an answer for them. So we're going to delve into each one. And <laughs> that, you know, I, uh, I do like these questions because it, it delves into not only who guest is, but who you are as well. So this is great. So people can start to find out a little bit more about yourself. So uh, we've got a couple of questions that we're going to go through and we'll just do a quick fire. And again, if any answer that comes up in here that you want to find out more about, I'll make sure that we get them in the show notes and you can go find out the show notes at boostly.co.uk forward slash podcast. Uh, scroll down to season seven, episode 18, click on Shelly's name and you can find them all there. So first and foremost, what is your favorite business book? Thinking Fast and Slow by Daniel Kahneman. So this one we can combine. Do you have a favorite podcast and or favorite YouTube channel that you personally listen to or, or watch on a daily or weekly basis? Favorite YouTube channel, which is Vox. I love Vox. All right. What is Vox? Yeah. As in like Fox News or Fox? No, uh, Vox, V-O-X. Oh, okay. Tell me, what, what, yeah. what, what, what is Vox? So they do these amazing videos on so many different things, politics, you know, climate crisis. So, you know, they did the whole thing about why are there brush fires in Australia right now? It just, again, they, they have so many different different topics that they cover. And they have a Netflix show called Explained. So if you're an Explained fan, that's Vox. So they also have a YouTube channel. I am now subscribed to Vox on YouTube. Thank you for that. Yeah, you're Pod welcome. And I'm sorry. That's it. You're done. <laughs> <laughs> I, am, I am done. I've already seen a couple that I want to I wanna check out. All right. So a uh, podcast then. Do you have a podcast you like to, to, to tune into? Um, uh, How I Built This with Guy Rax. Definitely. That is a personal favorite of mine as well. I love that one to find out how business owners have put together their, their business. There's some amazing episodes in there. All right. So uh, moving on to the next one, what is your favorite purchase under a hundred dollars in the past year? I put pounds, but we'll do dollars. So what's your favorite purchase under a hundred pound, hundred dollars in, in the past year? Yeah. So this is going to sound, I think pretty lame, but my laptop stand, I finally learned how to sit at a desk without having, you know, your back hunched over over your laptop for four hours. So be proud of myself for doing that. So that was the best purchase okay. this year. Do you know what the next development is? Is a stand up. Now I may look like I've got a fancy stand up desk here, but this is in an IKEA lac table for five dollars. Oh, I for sure thought it was a standing table. I was like his setup is too sick for me right now. <laughs> you know what it is? It is a, I'll send you a picture after. It's an Ikea lac table on top of a, on top of a desk with a, a laptop stand. So it's a total cost $15. <laughs> so oh, nice. big shout out to Ikea for that. What is, uh, okay, so what is, I, I would say like Guessy, but what is your biggest pain point? in like guesting or, or your day-to-day -day right now so you can be guesting yeah. or like your own personal like with the business development and whatnot what is like your personal like biggest pain point right now and in, in what, in what you're doing yeah so my biggest pain point is growth and managing all of our marketplace activities and ecosystem that grew to over 70 partners in under a year and we're continuing to grow every month so you know we've got to keep up with that growth and my day-to-day -day looks you know, completely in hand, entail with supporting that growth. But again, you know, it's amazing and fun too. So I wouldn't say it's a pain, but it is definitely 
you know, what I'm dealing with today in my business. 2019 was a, a crazy year for Gessie because that's when you just came onto the scene all of a sudden, it just flew out. And like, that's how I discovered you was from word of mouth, which is always good. And then yeah. just seeing all of the things happening with like the blogs and stuff. So yeah, it was a, obviously it was a big, a big year for you guys. So it's awesome to Definitely. see from looking from the outside. Okay. Thank so you. as you know, the Boostly podcast is all about direct booking. So what is your one tip that you could pass on to a hospitality owner, accommodation owner, property manager on how they could increase their direct booking? Invest and build your brand. You know, building your brand is probably the most important way to communicate with guests. And at the end of the day, the, the direct bookings is directly connected to how well you communicate with them and how well they associate themselves with you, right? Especially if you're doing it on your own with your own website. So build your brand, right? You know, we have a lot of resources on guest diversity for, do, for that, for building your brand. We did, you know, uh, an article with Full House on how to make your properties more Instagrammable, right? And and also another one on how to, again, manage your online presence. So definitely, definitely build your brand. I like that. And we will get links, uh, again, in the show notes to the guest diversity. Yeah. That's something that I've checked out, which I'm a big, big fan of. Finally then, what would you say is Guesty's superpower? I would say we have super strength. You know, we have... We have a team of 100 R&D in our company. We also are 300 employees strong and we're all, you know, geared towards making our users have the best experience with Guesty, whether it's, you know, with development to customer support, customer service. So I would say strength. And thank you so much for doing this. Now, if anybody wants to go and find out more about, about Guesty, can you please give us the link for people to go to? Is there a specific link where someone could book in a demo? Like how, how do people go and find out? More. Super easy. You go to guesty.com. You'll see many buttons on our website saying book a demo. They're in red as well. Um, and we're going to link that down here as well. So, you know, go and register for a demo. We'll really get back to you shortly. Show you around our platform. Lovely. And obviously, Guesty, you're going to be at the Short Stay Show, uh, March 12th, yep. London Excel, big stand. You can't miss it. It's nice, bright and blue. There's loads of happy people there. Go and say hi. Shelly's talk is obviously going to be on the marketplace stage. So go and say hi and, and tune into that. But in the meantime, yeah, go check them out on the socials. Go check them out on what they're doing. Go check out the Guest Diversity. And yeah, thank you so much for doing this today and thank you everybody for tuning in to the boosty podcast we're in like i say episode 18 of season seven if this is the first time you've tuned in to uh, the show please go on to boosty.co.uk forward slash podcast you can subscribe on itunes stitcher you can follow us on spotify you can even now find us on a google search just type in boosty podcast you can listen to us on a Google search, what I think is pretty cool. Before you leave, go rate, room, review, and subscribe. We've just passed 10,000 downloads, and this helps when you rate and review and you share it with other hospitality owners. So go pop them in Facebook groups, LinkedIn groups, go share it on your Instagram stories, your Facebook stories, or whatever you like to do to spread the word, because it, it, means, it means a lot. Next week, we're gonna be talking to another expert in the field, and as well, you have got just a couple of weeks left to submit your guidebook into the Hostfully competition. Hostfully sponsors of the Boostly podcast. You can go and submit your guidebook. And what they are doing is they are going to find and pick out their best one. And they're going to put it into loads of different categories. The winner of the categories are going to win lots of random goodies that Hostfully have got lined up, whether it is hoodies, premium listings, you can win a Boostly marketing review. So you've still got a couple of weeks. Go to hostfully.com forward slash contest and in there, submit your guidebook. And you can go and get your free guidebook now by just going to hostfully.com and go and start getting created. Just like Paula Butler did of the Boostly Academy, she's got a fantastic guidebook and, and her guests actually messaged her to say that they were really impressed with her guidebook. So that's the user experience that we're talking about. All right, we're going to leave it there. We'll be back again very soon for another episode of the Boostly Podcast. But thank you so much for tuning in.